talk hashtags for a second. So hashtags, for those who have no idea, just to clearly understand that there's three reasons for them. A hashtag is a word or string of words that one put with the hashtag symbol, make the word or string of words searchable. Searchable. It's like having Google search, right? So if I hashtag a word, like hashtag real estate, anything I use the hashtag real estate in and someone's searching for real estate, that post will be in that search. Simple enough. The other thing it's used for though is to build, to build your audience for search and it's also a way to tell your story through it using hashtags. So there's like three different ways to use the hashtag. This wasn't something I made up. I think it's probably a simpler way to do it, but that's how it was created. So hashtags are pretty relevant, especially <coughs> if you want to grow your audience or target certain people. So let's go there a second. If I use the hashtag real estate and I'm selling a property in Florida, hashtag real estate sounds cool. There's probably a lot of people that use it, but then does that make it better? It's very wide, it's very broad. Like I don't want people like, you know, maybe they do, that people in like, you know, China are searching for real estate. Is that gonna help my property in Miami? Maybe it will if that's the audience, but it seems broad. Versus using hashtag real estate Miami starts to give me a little bit more of search depth Right? Think about like how I search in Google. I could even go to the next stream, hashtag real estate Miami condos, hashtag real estate Miami waterfronts. Right? The other thing I want you to think about is not so much the words that are relevant just to the location. Who's the person I want? Like if I said to you, I have a condo waterfront with a boat slip in Miami, who's my typical buyer for that? What's the dream buyer for that? And you might say a yacht owner, maybe it's somebody from the Northeast, maybe it's someone in the financial district that's looking for a secondary. So where would I find them? So if I'm a multimillionaire sitting up in Manhattan and I'm typically the type, the type of buyer you want, where usually would you find me on Instagram? What am I looking at? What's the content I'm searching? Yachts, maybe golf courses, maybe weekend getaways. Think about where you'd get my attention as the buyer. We get so stuck on like the real estate Miami stuff. That's awesome, that's part of it. But who's your captive audience? Where do they spend their time? And I would say that like, all right, if I was gonna go network, where would I go to network with that kind of people to find that kind of buyer? I'd go find doctors. Hey, doctors, where are they going? They're hanging out at the golf course or the country club or the cigar shop where they got some wine library. Like they're looking for those interesting things. So I would find my target hashtag sometimes where that target audience might be spending their time. That's a hard part to think about. That's where we stop, the, we don't think that far into it. Where would they spend their time, right? So the same thing goes for investors or anything else for that matter. So as we're typing in hashtags, you're gonna create a core of standard hashtags you use for most posts. And then of course you can get very specific. So I'm gonna give you some more examples. If I start typing in hashtag real estate in the post, it's gonna start to show me how many people, it's gonna start to populate, are using that hashtag. So hashtag real estate, 12.4 million. Real estate agent, real estate investor. Starts to give me suggestive ones as well, right? So it starts to give me that. If I'm looking for New Jersey real estate, New Jersey restaurants, it starts to tell me how many people have used it. The larger ones doesn't mean it's better, but it's giving you a snapshot of where people are searching and where people are using those hashtags. Some of you never thought about, so it's a good place to get ideas. Now, let me make this simple for you, for those that can hashtag it. Like, this is overwhelming, I can't believe I'm talking about hashtags, right? <laughs> Let's understand the story part. Because it's also used to tell a story. The story part of this. When Dunkin' Donuts did this promotion a while back, and a lot of them, like Mercedes did the promotion, a whole bunch of people did the promotion. So when my Dunkin's, or Dunkin' says, we're gonna use the hashtag my Dunkin', uh, and they're gonna promote it across the platform. Anything you time, you're spending time with your Dunkin' Donuts, hashtag it with my Dunkin'. What does Duncan want as the end game? Dunkin. What do they want? Dunkin. Audience, what else, Susan? They want what? Buyers, Buyers. I screwed, what was this one over here? Business, buyer generated business. Buyer generated content. Buyer generated content. So let's think about that for a second. If, if I'm using or drinking my coffee, I'm on the beach, I'm drinking my coffee at work, I'm in the car, and I'm listening to the tunes, drinking my, and I'm tagging. They're building a storyboard. See, if you got a, a couple months worth of people using hashtag my Duncan, and I go to search my Duncan, what should I see? I should see people that have used the hashtag all in different locations in a storyboard of that search. Right. 
content created, they didn't have to create. So it's people using the product. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. It could be someone that's being rude about it, too. It could be someone like squashing a Dunkin' Cup going, I hate Dunkin' Cup. Right? It could be. Could be. Let's be real. Can't, there's no one, you don't own the hashtag. That's right, because people say that sometimes bad press is still press, right? But they're creating a storyboard of the people using the product. When people use the hashtag, it was a hashtag something for Mercedes, they were doing too. They wanted to see all Mercedes users all the time. Where's your Mercedes? Where's that? And they wanted that storyboard. People using it. Remember, people love a story. They love to see how people use the product. So let me give you this idea for a second. Um, when I'm using hashtags, I'm going to skip ahead for two seconds. Give me a second. I want to share with you a strategy, and I'll go back to that one. A way I would use a unique hashtag for my storyboard, right? So I would find a hashtag. Remember, you don't own it. It's not mine. But I would say create a hashtag that's so unique that no one would ever even think of it. So if I use the hashtag, so let's say I was good for about 20 listings a year. Maybe I sold 18 of them, right? And every listing and every sale, I, I hashtagged. Besides all my other hashtags about the location and time, I hashtag Jeff Lobs sold homes. I made it up. I, I put that hashtag on everything I sold. Right? Jeff Lobs sold homes. I can't even remember that either, right? So I do it just for me. Now, I love to win listings. That's what I love to do. Listings are the name of the game, and I know inventory is tight in a lot of markets right now. So, especially when you get on that appointment, I don't like to lose. So I would make sure that when I'm showing my customer and my client all of the ways we market homes and you've got your own branding and your own proposition and use in your offices, I would talk about how we leverage social marketing. And I'd say, listen, not only do we use Instagram and social media to market your homes, we leverage the platforms to where most agents will never think of. Let me show you an example. Now, if I went and I had 20 homes I sold last year, and I went to Instagram and I just put in the tab, and I just searched, Jeff Lobb sold homes, what am I getting? All 20 of those homes, beautifully done with text overlays, nicely done, and it's visual. Here's an example of the homes we marketed and sold last year. Now, even if I showed that to a customer, how many of your competitors right now would ever think to do that? How hard is it to do? As long as you have an interface, it's literally, as you type in that search word, it's on the fly. It will create that storyboard, just like Duncan, right there. All my homes that I've sold. And I'm showing them, oh, you sold that home over there? Oh, yeah, you sold the home over in Sparta. And they can see what you've sold and how pretty the marketing looks. See, it's not just about telling them you do it. It's showing them. So I would create that. Any brokers or managers in the room? Just curious, right? Another idea and thought. We love to talk about the culture when we're bringing new agents into our business. We have a great culture. We have a great culture. We do all these cool things. Telling me sounds great. Show me. So everything we do that has a culture thing to it, we did a training event, we had a holiday party, we went on a bus trip, we did a, whatever we did, use a unique hashtag like um, Jeff Lobb's office culture or whatever, Better Homes and Gardens something culture. Hashtag it so that when you're showing somebody, you search it. Here's all the things we've done in the past year or two. We've done that, remember the trip we did here? We did, you got all the photos and pictures that show people what you've done. That visual impacts me more than anything you tell me. Oh, my God.